Hey friends, Jen here with Serenity Hill Farmstead. Today I'm going to start something new. I am going to start kind of a series. I'm going to do prepper talks. The first section of this I'm going to start with first aid. Some of you know that before I had kids in my previous life, I was a paramedic in the Chicago area. And I learned a lot. I saw a lot. I have a lot of experience. And I'm not using it anymore. Um, physically, I am not able to do the job with uh, my autoimmune disease. And I mentally and just my heart feels called to be home with my children and teach them. But while I'm home, um, I still have all of this information and all this training and I feel like I need to share it. I feel like I want to help people be more prepared for certain situations. When you work in the medical field, um, you know firsthand that it is extremely important to have uh, a basic medical knowledge at the bare minimum and know how to be your own advocate. And my experience is when I lived not here where we do now, um, in, within the hospital, when I was living where I was working within those hospital systems, uh, you have a, a different situation, a different experience, um, if you will, than when you live rurally. Rural medicine is different. <laughs> it's a different experience. Uh, there's a lot of hurry up and wait, wait and see what happens kind of a thing. And that's not something that I'm used to doing. Uh, so I have felt like being prepared is important. And uh, I started building our medical supplies. So today I'm going to start sharing more of this information and um, regards to first aid preparedness. If you follow me on Instagram, you have already seen this. I started first aid Fridays over there. I do Friday lives at two o'clock um, every Friday. Uh, on Instagram. So if you want to talk live about any of this stuff, about any of the topics that we discuss over there, feel free to head on over there. You can follow me over there. I'll put the link in the description box too. But I'm going to talk about all of those topics here and probably have a little more information because I can edit here and I can make the videos a little bit longer and I don't have to worry about getting interrupted or what's going to be seen or done. I have four children, you know, um, dogs barking, all of that. So I can put a little bit more information in here. Uh, but first today, I'm going to show you guys my first aid box. Now, this is one of my first aid boxes. I am in the process of making different kinds for different situations. Uh, as a paramedic, we have what we call a jump bag. And that's the main bag that you grab to bring into any call. And in that bag is you have basically the, the bare necessities that you need to get your patient from the field, from wherever they are, into your ambulance. So I'm kind of creating that same kind of system, but a little more, a little different, a little more appropriate for it being in the back of my truck. Um, I have a Ford Expedition, so it is like this much trunk room. So I don't have the space for an ambulance worth of stuff. And I can't get all of that stuff anymore. So um, I'm going to show you what I have in here. This is, again, my bare minimum first aid kit that I have. This is the travel version. This is the little one. Also, we are on the porch because of all of the things I like about YouTubing, what I really don't like is having to tell my kids, shh, shh, I'm filming every 30 seconds when I'm doing something like this. So we're hiding on the porch, hiding, hiding. They know I'm here on the porch where I don't, I can let them do what they do and I can do what I'm doing, but it's cold out here. So what I have here is a three tiered tackle box that I got uh, the end of fishing season last year from uh, a local farm store. We've got some of these little compartments up here, which I don't use them for anything because it's so shallow. I can't really put anything in there, but I'm sure I'll come up with a use at some point. So inside, this is the top tier. Something is missing and I can't remember what. I have a list. I'll have to check my list here. Uh, I have an inhaler because we have asthma. A few people in the family have asthma. I have got a triple antibiotic cream. I have got acetaminophen, I've got ibuprofen. These are emergency thermal blankets. You can use these for many things. Um, you know, everything that they list here. See? Ta-da! 
I also have Q-tips in here, and then we've got hydrocortisone cream and anti-itch cream. A lot of this stuff was purchased from the Dollar Tree because they keep all of this stuff and it expires, and I'm probably not going to use all of it before it expires, so I'm not trying to spend a small fortune. So there's the expiration date on this stuff. I'd rather be prepared and have everything in here and have it expire and have to, you know, restock it than not have it when I need it. So that's okay. It'll be like 20 bucks when I have to restock everything. I'm not worried. I have an obscene amount of band-aids in here. We've got all of these. We've got all of these. I've got more down here. You'll see we've got these, but these are, they're different kinds. So we've got knuckle bandages. We've got smaller bandages. I've got butterfly band-aids in here. And I took these flexible band-aids out here. These are, these are my favorite, honestly. And um, put them under here so I could put the butterfly band-aids in there. Those are good for closing up stitches. Alcohol prep pads. This uh, can be used as an ace wrap. It's stretchy. It sticks to itself. Uh, it can also be used to help stop bleeding. I've got multiple triangular bandages. And we will get into how I use all of these things on another First Aid Friday. I've got gauze pads of many different sizes. I've got eye the eye ones and we've got um, just the regular square ones. I've got bigger ones. I've got abdominal pads. This is a triangular bandage that I had already opened and used. These are called in the medical world acrylics. Uh, I think they're just called on Amazon a gauze roll but they're kind of stretchy. And then you have small ones and then you have big ones. These are really, really good for if you have head injuries or if you're trying to stop bleeding. Also, these are really good. I purchased a tourniquet. It still has not come. I don't know where it is. It should have been here a while ago, but I want to have a tourniquet in here in case I need that. Stethoscope. I have a stethoscope because I know how to use a stethoscope. It is not complicated to learn how to use a stethoscope. So you should learn. This is a higher quality, a Lippmann stethoscope. You do not need a Lippmann. You can get a super cheap one. I have this because this is what I used when I was a paramedic. Zip ties, because you'd be surprised how many things you can use zip ties for. Um, yeah, so I always keep them. These are trauma shears or trauma scissors, I think you can search for them. These things cut jeans, belts, anything. <laughs> They're extremely, extremely strong. So these are pretty cheap. You can get them on Amazon too. These are the ones that I had when I was a paramedic. Uh, I keep heat wraps and I also have ice packs in here. Here it is. This is what I wanted to show you. And then we have this, this is bleed stop. This is something that you would use for a wound. I don't mean scratches, I mean a wound, like something that you are having a really hard time stopping bleeding. Again, when I do another first aid video, I will go ahead and explain how we do bleeding, you know, controlling bleeding, stopping it, um, and all of that. And I will talk exactly about how to use this stuff. Uh, I think the other one that you can get that's on the market is Quick, is it Quick Stop? I'm not 100% sure, I'll put it here. No, I'll look it up if I'm not correct. Um, and yeah, look, it even works for people on blood thinners. This is a two pack and I've got two of them in here. I'll just do that later. And, um, I've got more at home so that I can restock later. This is more band-aids. You know what? I have four children and a husband that cuts himself nearly every time we do a project. So I keep a ridiculous amount of band-aids. This is the large curlix that I had already showed you. I have a bottle of 70% alcohol. And I've got different kinds of tape. That is a cloth tape. This one here, this one here is personally my favorite type of tape. This is a plastic tape. Do not waste your money with the paper tape. It is junk. Unless you have someone that has really thin skin or super sensitive skin, but really this tape, and it tears really, really easily, and that cloth tape are the best ones. Um, silk tape is really shiny and white. That is super strong. So if you want to have that also, that's a good idea. Um, but really, I only have that if you get like the two inch silk tape. That's that's good too. But that I would only use for like, you know, a trauma kind of situation. I found this. I found this at the Dollar Tree also. It is sprayable hydrogen peroxide, which I love. This is awesome. Because if your kids are like mine and you need to clean something out, they see this brown bottle and they go, no, and I can kind of spray them as they're running. I'm kidding, but not really. Uh, so yeah, I like this. So that is my first aid kit. That's like my primary first aid kit that I take uh, with us everywhere. And that stays in there. So, you know, 
any of the basic skin the knee kind of things happen. I've got what I need. And also when my son caught a crowbar in between his eyes, that would have been helpful to have. And I didn't have as stocked of a kit then. So that inspired me to get serious. But like I said, that is just one of my kits. I do have, I have car preps. I have got, and that changes with the seasons, but I will go over that in another video. Uh, and I do have a couple other bags and I want to get a couple more so that I'll actually have kind of like a mini tote. I need more trunk space uh, for everything that we need just in case. You know, building a farm, building, building a new, <laughs> a new homestead, um, you work with power tools and chainsaws and we are out in the middle of nowhere. Like there's one stoplight in our county. So it's quite a distance to the nearest trauma center. And I have the education and experience to know how to help somebody, but I need to have the supplies. So I am slowly building this supplies. And along the way, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm purchasing, exactly how I'm putting it together and how I'm going to use it. So if you're interested in following along and learning more about first aid preparedness and how to be prepared both physically and mentally and how to do the things that you need to do in case of an emergency, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so that you can be notified when I put out a new video. My plan is to have these out every Friday. I'm just going to keep with the first aid Fridays like I do on Instagram. Um, and it will be behind Instagram because, like I said, this is recorded in a little more detail than what is on Instagram. But if you do want to talk live about any of these topics, go ahead and go over to inst Instagram. There's also a link down in the description box below. And you can follow me over there and watch out for those live chats also. We'll see you in the next one.